All right. So now we're going to start creating or migrating our existing code that as you can see over here into the Spring Boot application and we'll see what difference does it really make from our classical Selenium code versus the Spring Boot. So we are again going to talk about the dependency injections and the Spring Boot's basic in this particular section because this section is not all about talking about Selenium itself within the Spring Boot but we'll see the basic advantages of having it. So if you go to the Spring Boot project where we also have a pom.xml file where you can see all the dependencies coming up for you and as you can see it has a spring boot starter parent which is of version this one and it has the spring boot starter artifact id spring boot starter test which is going to basically of the spring boot test that we're going to be executing so this is for the application and this is for the test that we are currently executing and now we also going to add a, a selenium dependency because we're going to be talking even though it's a spring boot basic section we're going to talk especially on the context of uh, automation so i'm going to add the references of the selenium as well over here so i'm just going to cheat copy pasting some of the uh, references from here just to save some time so let me just copy this these two and I'm going to paste these dependencies. So this is nothing but the web driver manager and the Selenium Java. And I'm going to copy paste these two versions uh, informations uh, right from here. And I'm going to paste the versions over here. That's it. So this is the only thing which I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to uh, update the Maven references so that we'll have the dependencies resolved for us. That's it. This is the only thing which I'm going to be doing. And then we'll start talking about the basics of uh, Spring Boot over here. All right. So the first thing which we always used to do in Selenium automation or any Java program uh, while working with is going to be creating a simple class file. So I'm first going to create a simple uh, class file, uh, probably First, a package. I'm going to call this as uh, pages. And within this pages, I'm going to create a class file. And I'm going to call this as probably home page. And within this home page, let's assume that we have a um, we have a page object model code. And I mean, you don't worry about whether the page object model code is going to work fine or not. But I, I'm just going to uh, write a simple code as if that this particular uh, object exists. Actually, this is an uh, object which is really exist in one of the app that we are going to be automating in our next section, which is nothing but the uh, EA app dot So this is like a home page which actually has got a uh, login link as well as the employee list link. So this is the application which I am currently uh, doing it over here. But just that we are not going to be executing it this time with the uh, Spring Boot application. Uh, rather, we'll first understand the concept of Spring Boot clearly in this section, right? So let's assume that these are the two properties that we have uh, for the page object model in the home page. And then we are going to perform a simple operation, something like a uh, click login or something like that. So if I want to do this, so I can just do something like public uh, and then void uh, login. And this login is going to basically do this uh, login link dot click something like that. That's it. So this is what it is going to be doing. And similarly, uh, there is going to be one more method which is going to perform a clicking of the employee list, something like this. So these are the two methods that we have on this particular home page. And now let's try to create the login page over here so this is going to be the login page which is going to hold the login operations like page object model for the login page and something like that so we are going to be doing that as well over here so this is co the code which is going to be performing a login operation and this is the home page which is going to perform the home uh, page operation so at the moment because we are not going to be performing any uh, real login operation using the uh, spring boot uh, probably what we can do is we can just try to comment this particular code and then we can try to just write a system dot out uh, click the home page login and similarly on the login page we can just try to see username and password password something like that 
So this is what we are going to be basically uh, doing over here. And we can just leave it as it is for now. So this is what we are actually going to be doing at the moment uh, in this particular piece of uh, point of time. And probably we'll also say that we are going to perform a uh, click login, something like that. And then I'm just going to do a sys out of click login from login page, something like that. That's it. So these are the two things that we are going to be uh, doing over here. But now the next question comes is how we can actually access these two pages from the Selenium code. If you remember all these days, we used to do something like this, like home page, uh, page is equal to new of the home page. Uh, and then we're going to do something like page dot click login. Uh, and then we're going to do something like the login page, login page is equal to new of the login page. And we're going to say uh, login page dot click login something like that. So if we try to run this particular piece of code, this is going to work as expected. So this is something which we already know that this is how in, say, in the Java world we used to do that. But as you can see, this is a very, very super simple code. And we, of course, are creating uh, two instances of these two over here so that we can actually work with the, uh, with the code. But what if we wanted to do it in a different fashion as well? For example, on the page navigation of Selenium, we used to do this. So if I see in the application, this is the home page. And once I click the login, it returns me a login page. So on clicking the login button on a home page, it returns me a login page. And once I enter the username and password and click the login, something like admin and password. And once I click the login, it's going to again take me to the home page. So there is a link like a navigation happening on the Selenium. So we used to handle this page navigation of Selenium concept pretty well using what is called as returning the object, something like this. So once you click the login, it is going to return you from the home page that you do. And similarly, if you go to the login page, once you click the login button, uh, after entering the username and password, you are going to return the new home page. And this home page has to be returned over here as well. So if you do this way, then probably you can change the code a bit over here. So uh, once you click the login, you are going to return a login page, something like this. And then you can play around instead of creating a new login page, you can just do something like this. And if you try executing this particular piece of code, this is going to work as well as expected. So this is the usual uh, Selenium Java code that we try to write for the page object model and for the page navigation. And you know this idea already, but there are a lot of caveats at the moment over here. And we are going to bring even more caveat in our next lecture. And then we will see how we can resolve those caveat using Spring Boot.